share um, with you tonight. I shared Sunday morning, and I'm, I don't even know whether I even particularly talked about the title of my message Sunday, but, but bottom line, uh, the title was I'm a Believer. And uh, not like the monkeys, you know, I'm a believer, you know, <laughs> not, not that kind of a believer, right? And uh, I'm going to just kind of share this with you real quick, and I hope I can get through this tonight. I believe I will in uh, orderly time. But um, in um, February of 2009, I just got really in my heart that I needed to go get a physical, complete physical, and um, wasn't anything, you know, just really wrong. I just, just on the inside. And uh, I told Becky about it. And and um, there's a place in Dallas called the Cooper Clinic, and and that's what they do. They give you a top to bottom. I mean, it, it's it's. I, I don't I don't even know whether they still do that or not. But but anyway, um, I called them, and they said, well, we don't have anything until. Um, uh, I don't know, huh? Yeah, three months. And I said, well, if you have a cancellation or anything, call me. Well, they call me. Um, and so Monday um, was February the 9th. Uh, I, I got up early in the morning and drove over there. And, um, and boy, did they give you a physical. I mean, oh, my goodness, man. You know what I mean? They did everything. Your hearing, your eyes, your uh, everything. And um, um, I don't know, I don't think they gave me a psychological test because I wouldn't have finished the day out. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, so um, it was late. You know, it was, it was 7, 8 o'clock at night by the time they got through from 6 in the morning. And um, so um, I'm sitting in the, in the doctor's office. Dr. Sackerson was his name. And I'm sitting there, and he's telling me how healthy I am, you know, and I, just how, you know, how all the tests were fine, and everything was great, and everything was wonderful, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm happy. You know? Then the phone rings, and he, he uh, answered, and he said, okay, well, we'll, we'll come down there. And um, so he said, listen, the, the radiologist wants to see us. There's something on the they did a, a CAT scan, and they want, there's something on the CAT scan they want to check out, you know, talk to you about. So, you know, we went, we, we went down to the, um, uh, where the CAT scan is. Why are all those machines always down? <laughs> you know, MRIs and CAT scans, they're always in the basement. They're always, I mean, you're already going to be claustrophobic enough just getting into things. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that because I'm going to miss what I need to share with you tonight. But um, he said, look, there's something here. Um, we, we're just seeing something here on the, on the CAT scan uh, uh, around your kidney, and I'd like to do another CAT scan. And they did it with some kind of stuff you have to drink and that type of thing. And so after he did it, and, and um, basically he said there's something on your kidney, and it's and it's probably cancer. Uh, we can't tell for sure, but just from experience, it's probably cancer. And more than likely, because it's your kidney, it's renal cell carcinoma. Now, it's interesting because I had a close, close friend die of that same cancer. Yeah, I, I was with him beside his bed when he when he when he died. Um, fought it for a long time. So I, I'm I'm like like knock me down. I mean, like, are, are you kidding me? I mean, it just I mean, literally, I it just kind of I, I didn't I was numb, literally numb. Didn't know what to say. Didn't didn't just didn't know. And so you know, I'm I'm driving home from Dallas, and I called Becky and told her and. Basically, we talked on the phone almost all the way from Dallas to Shreveport um, uh, about what, uh, what we needed to do. I, I am not going to be able to do this and, and teach what I need to teach tonight. <laughs> I can't get it all done, but I, I'll start anyway. Um, so I immediately, listen, immediately 
Becky and I had to decide what are we going to believe. Are we going to believe the doctor's report or are we going to believe the Lord no matter what the doctor's report says? Okay. And so um, uh, we, we, it, it was interesting because I actually had a, an appointment with my regular doctor the next day. And uh, so I went in and talked to her, and she really kind of encouraged us about it. And, and, and I don't want I, I to get into this because I, I want to share from the Word tonight. But, but bottom line, um, we just believed God, that God was going to take care of it. We weren't denying it was there. We knew it was there. We saw it on the, on the film. But we were just believing, God, I'll live and not die. And, whatever, and God will send us across the path of the right people. And it was like supernaturally, I can't only explain how God sent us to the right people. I mean, even to the point of we, were, uh, we had one a surgeon recommended, and uh, I said, Becky, you're not going to believe this, but he's on the news on KSLA today talking about this surgery. A- amen. So, but, but here's what I want you to share. It didn't shake my faith, but it did make me think about what do I believe? What do I believe? Because it's one thing to talk about, especially if you're a preacher, all the things you believe, you know, and, and you know, everything's fine. But, but when you get into a crisis situation, what do you believe? What's the foundation of what you believe? Is it just something that some, uh, some preacher preached and you thought it sounded good so you accepted it? Or have you got it in your heart because it's the Word of God and you put it in your heart? And I had to examine myself. I had to, I had to look at myself and say, where's my foundation? Where's my foundation? I gotta, I've got to find out where I really am, because I mean, I've preached on, you know, lots of different subjects in the Word of God about faith and about believing God and about where we are and who we are in Christ and, 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 and all of it's it, right, all of it's good. But all of a sudden, when you're facing something, you better know what you believe. You better have a foundation of what you believe. So I was praying, and, and in fact, I opened my, I had a diary, a diary, of that I just want to, it's not a long diary, but it, uh, an everyday diary from the moment I got that, that, uh, that diagnosis. Every day until we got through it. And so I, I, I pulled it up today just, to, just for a minute, just to see, and, and, uh, and I'd actually kind of forgotten about a little bit of it, but, but one of the things that I made up my mind to do was to listen you know, sometimes we want to be talking to God about all this stuff, but sometimes you need to listen. You need to hear what the Spirit of God's saying. You need to, to listen. And so I was praying, but I was listening. And I, and I, and I was talking to the Lord, and I said, and I said now, Lord, I know, you, I know you're the healer, you know, and I, you know, I just kind of went through things that I, that I knew. I said, but I, I, need to, I need the foundation. I need to know in exactly what I believe and where, it, where I believe it and, and, and the whole process. I, I need to know. And so the Lord, just as clearly as, as a bell, the Holy Spirit led me to Romans chapter 3. And, 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 and to, to understand that I had authority in this situation, I had to know. Amen. And I had to know where I was you know, in my own faith, you know, and, and see, some people say, well, you had surgery. You, yeah, I did. The, I talked to the doctor and, and uh, he's a spirit filled Christian, you know, friend, really. And he said, well, Sam, I know the cure. And I said, what? And he said, well, just take it out. Take the kidney, take it out. And that's the cure. And I said, well, let's, let's do the cure. Now I could have been, you know, I'm believing God for healing. I'm not going to, I'm going to just Walk by faith. Well, I was walking by faith. <laughs> I was right where I was. But I don't want to get into that because what I want to show you tonight is is the 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 God just showed me the flow of 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 how um, 
how to walk in the foundation of what he, he had for me. Um, and so it, it starts in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, so you can just follow along. Uh, and, and I want to show you this because I think it'll help you with your own faith. So obviously the foundation of everything that, that we do is grace. We don't deserve any of it. Okay, the foundation is grace. Okay, but, but when, you, when you start understanding what, what God did for us, there's a flow to how it all works together. And, and that's what I want to show you tonight. I think you'll get this. But in um, Romans chapter 3, there's a journey, a flow uh, of this new world of grace that we step into when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Okay? And so you've got to understand that. And it's got to, there's, you've got to have a foundation. You can't just go pull a scripture out and say, well, this is it. Where's your foundation? So it says in, in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 21, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, the, the end result of where we're going tonight is righteousness. Okay? That's where we're going to end up. But you need to understand the flow and the journey of this and how, how it all connects together. Okay, so stick with me. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's nobody better than anybody else. Okay, just so you know, this ain't got anything to do with how good you are. Okay. So now listen to what it says here in, uh, in, in verse 24. Being justified, all right, so just stop there a minute, because sometimes people get confused. The word justified and the word righteous are the same word. It's the same Greek word. So let's, we could say it this way, we're justified or made right, now listen to this next word, freely, by His grace, okay? The word there, the word there freely, literally means without cost, okay? We are made righteous by His grace. So it starts with grace. It doesn't start from you. It doesn't start from what you've done or who you are. It starts from grace, okay? It starts from God doing this, uh, and, 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 and it, the word freely there is really good. Without cost, you didn't have to pay a price. You didn't have to earn anything. God did it, okay? You got to get that foundation. You got to understand this, this starts out, we're justified, made righteous, which is the end result, okay? Freely, without cost, by His Grace. The Amplified Bible says freely and gratuitously. Okay? And, and then you jump over to Ephesians chapter, and we're coming back here, so stick with me. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says this. For by grace you have been saved. Now listen, you ready? Through faith. Okay? And that grace is not of yourself, it is a gift from God. When we could not help ourselves, grace was there. Now, you got to understand, well, well, how far does grace go? Well, just stick with me, and I'm going to show you, okay? So it, it, it starts with you don't deserve it. It's free, it's gratuitous. God decided to do it. God created the method to do it. For you to receive and to walk in it. So it's by grace we are saved. Okay? When we couldn't help ourselves. Why did God do that? Well, Ephesians 4, 2, uh, 2, 4 tells us why. Because God is rich in mercy because of his great love. 
wherewith he loved us. God loved us so much that he was willing to extend his mercy and create grace for us even though we don't deserve a lick of it. Okay? Thank God for that. So the burden is not on me. See, listen, when you get into a fight, I'm going to call it a faith fight, where you're having to pray, you're having to believe God, you got to understand that the root of everything is you don't earn it, you didn't deserve it, but you can receive it. Okay, just stick with me here. I think you're going to, you'll get this as we go, but just hang, hang with me. Um, I've, I've got to read this. If, it won't take but a second, but I want to read this out of the, uh, the Amplified Bible um, in, in verse, um, hang on a minute. The Amplified Bible in verse um, 2, 4 of Ephesians. Listen, but God, so rich is he in mercy because of and in order to satisfy that great and wonderful and intense love wherewith he loved us. So you got to understand that this God loves you and he provided his grace for you because you couldn't earn it, you couldn't do it, you couldn't do anything about it to receive anything from God at all. He said, because of the love that I have for you, I'm creating a way. And it's called grace. Just stick with me. I, I think you're gonna, this is going to help you. Ver, verse 5 goes on to say, uh, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ by what? Grace, you've been saved. <laughs> So you, you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. But yet, now here's what you've got to understand. Because sometimes when you get in a faith fight, you've got to feel like I don't deserve this or something happened or the door was open or some, something like that. And, you don't, and the enemy will try to get you where you don't deserve it. Well, you don't deserve it anyway, but the good news is God's grace works anyway. It, it works anyway. Because he made us alive together with Christ when we couldn't do it on our own. No way we could do it. Everybody still with me? Okay? So just stick with me because you gotta, you gotta, you got to follow me with this. Because you, if your foundation is wrong, then all of a sudden when you get to righteousness, which means you have the right to go to God in any situation then your righteous thought patterns are going to be wrong and then you're going to be begging God or wondering why God didn't or you're going to blame God because your focus is wrong. So you got to have the right foundation if you're going to have to, if you're going to walk by faith. That was what I had to understand beginning to end. Where do I stand? Okay. So I know it was by grace, but now listen to verse 8 of Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved. Now listen to this next part. Through faith. You got it? Through faith. We're saved by grace, but it has to be through faith. See, there are a lot of people that talk about the grace of God and all oh, the favor of God and all this. It, it means nothing if your faith is not active in it. God created God created a pattern for us, a way to live for us, and, and literally, grace is God's part, faith is our part. Okay? Sure, God's grace is there, but it doesn't mean anything unless your faith is attached to it. We're saved by grace through faith. If still with me? Amen. Okay, this is, the, we're going to just kind of build on this, so just stick with me. Okay, so without faith on man's part, 
God's part, listen, God will not impose his grace and salvation on anybody. He won't impose his grace or salvation, which is what the reason he gave us grace, on anybody. It has to be by faith. You have to accept it by faith. Everybody still with me? No matter what it is that we're talking about, and I'm going talk, to show you in a second, but just hang with me. No matter what it is, grace is there, but the only way to access it is through faith. And, and what happens a lot of times is people don't understand that and they're wondering why God's not doing something. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you believing? Everybody still with me? Okay. Now, now just hang with me because I'm going to show you. Because when I saw this, when I got to righteousness, I was ready. I was ready to go to God. I was confident because I understood that God did this out of his love for us and he gave us this great package called grace for our lives. But grace does not work independent of faith. It doesn't work independent of faith. And a lot of people think it does. Well, I don't have to do anything. It's the grace of God. Oh, it's the grace of God. Well, what do you believe in? Well, it's the grace of God. Listen to me. Unless your faith is attached, and you have to understand how to attach it, and I'm going to get to that. You have to understand how to do that. Because it sounds great, but the Word says something different. Without faith on man's part, God will not impose his grace and salvation on anybody. That's why we preach the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. How shall they hear unless somebody is sent? To what? Preach to them so they can have faith, so they can access the grace of God. One of the things that, that, that Becky and I, through that whole process dealing with this thing with, with my body was we marveled at the grace of God working. In every, we had that grace and that favor every step of the way. It was amazing. Well, that's just because you're lucky. No. Well, that's just because they know who you are. No, it had nothing to do with any of that. It had to do with the fact that we put our faith on the line and we believed that we were going to be able to access God's grace to, for, to carry us through this. Would it have been better if God had just touched me and the whole thing had gone away? Absolutely, but it didn't. And I wasn't going to fool around with it because I let a friend, I say I let a friend die. I sat with a friend who died from this so I knew the consequences, and I knew where my faith was. Everybody still with me? Okay, so you have to have faith in action toward God, and then God's grace comes back toward you. And this is all, fit. listen, this is all fulfilled because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Our grace is, is bundled up in Jesus. It's not arbitrary. It's not just something you can choose what you call grace. It's all bound up in what Jesus did for us. Now just, you're gonna see this, so just stick with me. So you have to have focused faith in what Jesus did for us, okay? so. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 24 again. Now listen. This is going to help you. Being justified freely by his grace, which we access how? By faith, okay. 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You got it? Okay, so now we're adding an another element to this that you've got to understand. It's God's grace. We access that grace by faith, and here are the parameters of what we can access. It's called redemption. It's called what he died for and paid for for us. You got it? Nothing outside of that. It's redemption. Now, I believe your faith can do a lot of things. Jesus said you could move mountains with your faith. Okay? I, I, I believe that. Okay? But listen. So, verse 25. Well, let me, let me just read this first, okay? Grace was released toward us through redemption or the result of the sacrifice of Jesus. One translation says it this way. Now, this act of grace is made possible by the ransom paid. Another one says the ransom paid in full. Jesus bought us back. Okay, he bought us back from our trespasses and our sins, our life, our lifestyle. He's, one translation says to buy back completely. So what, what, what did Jesus, what, what Jesus paid for is what we have to focus our faith on. If you don't know what he did for you, if you don't understand what that redemption did, then you're not going to be able to access the grace of God by faith in that redemption. You, you following the plan here? Okay, there, there's, a, there's a, a flow here to this. And it go, let me read verse 24 again. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God set forth as a propitiation or a mercy seat or a sacrifice. Okay, now listen. By his blood through faith. You can't get to his redemption any other way than through faith. Now, see, some people say, well, you know, that, that redemption means we're going to heaven, that Jesus forgives our sins. Absolutely. But when you study what happened to Jesus and what he did and what the Word of God says, he provided a lot more than that for us. He bought us back. He bought us back. Listen to this translation. The essence of this atonement consists in the shedding of blood. The channel whereby we profit by it is faith in him. The channel where we profit is by faith in him. So it all starts with grace. God loved us so much, he said, I'm going to do this for you. You don't deserve it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, everybody got that? That's the, first, that's the first thing. His grace comes online, but then you have to access that grace by faith. And what are you accessing? Where is your faith attached? What is it attached to in regard to his grace? The redemption, what Jesus paid for, with his blood and his broken body. That's what your faith attaches to. We, 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 we attach it to salvation. We talk about the God loves you, God's grace is, you know, uh, is so wonderful that he sent his son to die for you. But unless you attach your faith to that, you can't get saved. And I, I don't have time to get into it. Go read Romans chapter 10. You have to attach your faith to it. But, but Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, what he paid, the price he paid, is far beyond that. So that an act of grace made possible 
by the ransom paid literally gives us a free access to all that God provided through that sacrifice. Everything. And it's by faith. His channel whereby we profit by it is faith in him. So I'm, I'm getting closer now to understanding the flow of where I need to go. Okay, I understand where I'm going now. I understand that it's, it's by grace, through faith, because of the redemption that paid the price to buy us back. And so anything we attach our faith to uh, in regard to redemption, God works in our life. So I'm bought back with the blood, with his blood. Okay, I'm bought back with this, but listen to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. <clears throat> Knowing that you were not redeemed, okay, with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I read this a few weeks ago in service. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, They sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. You were slain. You, now here it is. You have redeemed us to God by your blood. So I've been redeemed. I've been bought back. I've had a price paid for me. So when you start understanding what Jesus did for you because of that blood, the package that he paid for you, if you understand what he did, then you can access it. You can access it. Yes. Hebrews 9 verse 11 says this, But Christ came as high priest of good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. This goes past your life on this earth. This redemption what he paid for. Now see, a lot of people stop and say, well, he paid, um, you know, he paid for your sins. He did. But what about, what about Isaiah 53 that Peter quoted also? 1 Peter 22, 24. He was wounded for our transgressions. We know that, right? Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the Amplified Bible says, the punishment needful for us to obtain peace was upon him. And, and by his stripes, we are healed. Peter actually changed it up and said, you were healed. Why? Because it's part of redemption. He bore that in his body. He bore it in his body so that we could grab hold of it by faith. If you listen, if you you say, well, how do you know that? Well, number I, I just gave you a scripture there, okay, but but listen. All you have to do is look at Jesus' ministry to understand that healing's part of his ministry. Well, that was Jesus on the earth. Jesus, listen to me. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was demonstrating what he was going to do through the cross. He wasn't trying to impress. He, he said, well, he was showing them that he was the son of God. No, he wasn't. He hid from that. He ran from it. Don't tell him. 
Don't tell anybody. Anytime he talked about those things, he talked about being the son of man. Not a divine creature, the son of man, born of a woman, born of a virgin. He was demonstrating. So go through the Bible and find out how many times he healed people. Just go read it. Say, so, well, pastor, he didn't heal you. Listen, I access that grace at the point of my faith. It's, I still got healed. Amen. That was 2009. Now, I, I understand. And I, I want you to understand you're accessing it. Listen, one of the things Becky and I prayed about, we, we, I knew where my faith was, okay? I knew, I, I, I know that, that under certain circumstances, I could have just declared I'm healed and I'd be healed if that's where my faith was. But I want to tell you, that's not where it was. Now, since then, I've gotten a handle on things, and when things come against me, I exercise my faith, and the grace that, that provided that redemption for me to receive. But the, the thing you've got to understand is, once you get a revelation of the fact that God's grace is there and your faith is there, he'll work with you wherever you are. There's no best or better. Everybody still with me? Okay. So, and I, I, I'm going to have to stop talking about the redemption because I, I want to finish this. So listen. So the end result, and the, this is important, you start with grace, you end up with righteousness. Okay? You end up with righteousness. And, and it's not your righteousness. Romans chapter 3, verse 22 says, it's the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Well, what does that do to you and for you when you get a revelation that you're right with God? Not only are you right with God, you can talk to God and you can expect an answer. Well, you know, God said no. How do you know? Well, he didn't say anything. You don't know my father very well if you think that because he'll answer you. That's why we have the Holy Spirit so that we can know those things that God has provided for us. Everybody still with me? So <clears throat> the end result is that that redemption through his blood and then we release our faith in Christ Jesus, listen, all of a sudden, it puts us in a different place. It gives us a different status with God than we had before we got saved. Now, I prayed before I got saved. I never heard his voice one time. I mean, I, I remember praying some prayers, you know. But I don't, I, I, you say, well, he heard you. Well, I'm sure he did hear me. But when you, when, listen to me, when you access that grace by faith and, and you become a new creature in Christ, and you access that faith and all of a sudden you start looking at what that redemption provided for you, then you can access that redemption, now listen to me, by grace, not by works. By grace. Now, you want to list, and I'm not going to, if I come to your home, I give you a list. Then okay, I gave you a list. I, I I'll give you a list of of things that we're redeemed from that we can access. Don't have time to do it tonight because I got to get to the end result, and that is the righteousness of God. And why is that important? Because it gives you boldness to expect God to work in your life, no matter when, no matter where, no matter how. God didn't get mad at me because we went to the doctor. He just worked with us right where we were. We had two or three different doctors tell me, you are a miracle. Glory. 
Now, I'm not, I understand healing, healing in its fullness. I understand that. But the bottom line is, once you start having that relationship with the Father because of the righteousness of God, He's not mad at you. He just wants to help you. But it's still got to be by faith. Let me read this to you in Romans chapter 3, verse 22 again. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, now listen, to all and on all who believe. There it is again. To all and on all who believe. Righteousness doesn't belong to people who don't believe. It belongs to those that are part of the family that make Jesus the Lord of their lives who access that grace by faith. I like, let me read you a couple of translations. Listen to this. And then I've got a point I've got to get to before we're finished. So listen. One translation says, I refer to a rightness with God that comes through Christ to all, to all who put it into practice. Another translation, it is a righteousness of God which comes by believing in Jesus Christ. Here's another one. It is a way of being put in right relationship with himself which God provided. That right relationship is reached through faith in Jesus Christ. So the end result is, listen, the end result is it starts out with grace. You add your faith to it. You get a revelation of the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. And God says, oh, by the way, now you're made right with me. You are justified. You are the righteousness of God now in Christ Jesus through faith. So, well, what does that mean? It means that now your faith can grow. It means that that relationship you have with the Father can expand. Let me show you this. Romans chapter 1. Uh, verse 17 in the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed. Now listen. Both springing from faith. It's got to be by faith. Everybody still here? Now listen to what it says. And leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith, that arouses more faith. In other words, once you get on this journey track, this track of it's the grace of God, and when I access that grace by faith, now listen to me, because literally the grace of God provides you everything you need, but you got to access it. I preached a series years ago called Grace World, and so many Christians come in and out of Grace World. You know, they don't live in grace world. I won't live in grace world. Well, how am I going to do that? You got to live in grace world by faith. And you've got to live there understanding what that redemption did for you and that righteousness belongs to you that you can go into the very presence of God. It springs from faith, leads to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses more faith. One translation says it this way. Lifting men from one step of faith to another. I like that. I, 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 you know, it, it almost sounds unholy, I guess would be a way to put it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am right with God. Well, you just think you're perfect. No, I'm not. Back, go backward, okay? I go back to the redemption. And the faith that I access, the grace of God, brings me to a place of righteousness, of right standing with God. So that means that no matter where I am in my life, I can access the presence of God, I can go into the Father's presence with all boldness and all confidence that what Jesus redeemed me from, I can access by faith because of that grace. And the more you, listen, the more you do that, 
the more faith works in your life. Some people don't ever even use their faith until they get in, a, get in trouble. And then they're looking for somebody else's faith to ride. Don't get upset. I'm just telling you the truth. But, but listen, even having Becky by my side, I still had to depend on my faith. My faith. But because I understood who I was in Christ and that, that I had been made the righteousness of God, I could go to the Father anytime. And I could access everything that God has. Does God make you right one minute and then take it away from you the next? No. No, it, it belongs to us. And it builds confidence in our lives. Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 21 says this. So as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign, listen to this, through righteousness to eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a rulership, there's an authority that's attached to the righteousness of God. It talks about in Romans 5, 17, the Amplified, the last part of it says, putting them in right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's authority. Well, who do you think you are? I think I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I think that everything that Jesus redeemed me from, I have a right to access and receive in my life. But you won't get it by this message. You won't get it till you get a revelation of it for yourself. Because really, faith increases. It grows for the believer who will allow it to in their, in their lives. I'm just about finished. Romans chapter 10, verse 6 says this. The righteousness of faith speaks. The righteousness of faith speaks. And, and the first thing that Paul did was he said, don't say this and don't say this. Then he goes on to say, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. The, we, we live by a word, and it is a word of faith. Why? What does that mean? It means that the word that you find in the New Testament always will access redemption. It will access the grace of God because of what Jesus did. He said it is a word of faith that we preach. I can say it another way. It's the word of redemption by his blood. Amen. Psalm 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying? Are you talking like everybody else? You declare what everybody else says and what, you know, well, you never know what God's going to do. Well, I know. Because I have access. There's a, it's a, it, 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 there is a lineage there. There is a, a linear following where you can understand, all right, God's grace, I access it by faith. In the redemption through the blood. And oh, by the way, that gives me right standing with God. There's a righteousness there. And that, and that righteousness, which is of faith, operates in your mouth and in your heart. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. The word confession here, listen, I'm finished, means to say the same thing as, to agree with something or to consent with something. Why would I want to agree with what the devil says when I can agree with what God says? 
Well, but you know, what about your circumstances? That doesn't, what, is that, what does that have to do with it? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm going to agree with what God says. I'm going to redeem, uh, agree with the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The, listen, the faith that comes from the righteousness of God speaks what it believes. Okay? And, and to be honest with you, you're believing something. Why not believe what Jesus did for you? Why not believe what he did for you? Why not believe that by his stripes you're healed? How, how much harder is that? To, well, the doctor said I'm going to die. Well, how much better is it to believe what God's word says? Amen. Worst thing you could happen is you could go to, you go to heaven saying what God said. I, I know that sounds terrible, but, but the other side of that is your faith can work in your, get your body where it needs to be. Anybody get anything out of this? Listen, I, I rushed through it and I understand that, but you've got to understand, I, I had to have that understanding how this thing flowed because the bottom line is I had to be able to go to God and say, now, Father, here's where I am. Here's where I need. I've been telling the, the communion uh, people, do you know that one of the things that redemption provided for you is wisdom? We, we have wisdom. He'll give us wisdom. Here's what you need to do. Here's where you are. Here's what you need to do. The Holy Spirit will, uh, will help you with that. It's not all about just healing. It's, it's about living and living God's life. Amen? So it's a, it's a linear operation. One doesn't work without the other. You can say you're the righteousness of God in Christ, but then if all you do is say, well, it's up to God, it's God's grace, whatever, you missed it because there's no faith there. <clears throat> you have to start from the beginning <clears throat> and it starts producing faith. And you start getting a revelation of who you are in Christ. <laughs> <laughs>